What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing something quite different. I won't be heading out on the water today even though look for many more of those videos coming soon. Instead I got the opportunity to sit down and talk to the CEO of Big Sky Inflatables. Now for those of you who don't know Rich at Big Sky Inflatables is actually the guy behind Watermaster. Now one of my favorite ways to go fly fishing is floating down a river. Now this Watermaster was a game changer for me and changed the way I experienced fly fishing. So I'm going to be talking to Rich about how this idea started, where the company originated, where it's going, and all the cool projects he's involved in. I hope you enjoy the video guys. Subscribe if you aren't already and all of Rich's links will be down in the description. So make sure to go check out Watermaster and Big Sky Inflatables. Uh, and so let's just jump right into it. All right, Rich. So welcome to the show. Uh, it's great to have you. Thanks for, for joining. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know Rich and Watermaster, uh, I'd like to give you a brief second to basically give us your pitch and, and what you're all about. Uh, I am the owner of Watermaster Rafts. We build and have been building the Watermaster for me personally over 20 years. Um, Jeremy works here and he's been doing just as long. So a um, lot of time into the product and we love it. We have a passion for it. Um, we think it offers people a way to experience rivers and lakes totally different than any other boat out there. I mean, I'm a family man. I've got a wife and, and uh, a 12 year old, two twin, three year olds. So life is crazy. Before, busy, busy. During and after work, but um, that's what I do. Yeah. We, we, we build boats and, and uh, we love it. Yeah. Very cool. So like, where, where did this get started? And now I have done uh, my own research sort of on your, your background on sort of your right. education and when, when you started building boats early, but for anyone who, who doesn't know, um, like what led you into building fly fishing boats? Oh, uh, wow. Um, graduated from the university of Montana, a <laughs> business okay. degree. And, yeah, and cool. honestly didn't know what the heck I was going to do. Like the outdoors, um, got a job at a local sporting goods store, you know, in the hunting fishing department and uh, uh, actually met Jeremy, who works for me still to this day at that point. And he worked currently at the previous Watermaster. So oh, Watermaster has okay. been around uh, the product, uh, the Grizzly essentially um, model has been around since the early 90s. Right. Um, and so I actually started working with him at Watermaster for somebody else back in the you know starting in 2001 missoula montana and then um 2006 the opportunity presented itself to to do it myself and i thought that we could take the product farther um i thought we could definitely do customer service better yeah um take care of our, of our people more um kind of beginnings of team water master you know um really cool and then yeah just went from there and so i've owned it since 2006 and so basically it was positioned as a fishing boat before absolutely okay it was a kick boat the the, the main it was a kick boat so what it was offering an alternative to the framed pontoon boats um and then the flow tubes that didn't have any kind of oars or anything but fins so yeah. it was kind of like the perfect combo of being able to still use fins and kind of the new get around like a smaller boat and lightweightness of yeah. a float tube but then have oars um, so that you could use it more like a float tube or a pontoon boat because the pontoon boats, you know, are just too heavy when mm -hmm. you get the frame and you get the tubes and you get everything put together. They take a long time to set up. Um, Watermaster's quick, you know, doesn't and take long at all, no parts. That's right. That's almost your competitive advantage, right? You really narrow down on what people are using these boats for, packing them right. up, making them super light and, and, and niching down that product to the perfect audience. Right. And then even since then, though, we've been able to do is add accessories that have opened up its abilities as well. I mean, whether it's running a little motor on it or putting our boat bottom that, that we make now, it's super popular, um, turning into a little raft, you know, you stand up and sight cast in a lake and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny. Yeah, I saw that on the website, your boat bottom, because I'm light enough. I'm a small enough guy that I've been able to just stand on the, uh, on, the, the on the wooden board. So yes. it's, it, that's that, but yeah, I boat bottom would be, be nice. Cause it's nice to get, especially when I'm on a lake, let's say 
uh, I've, I was doing it pike fishing this summer mm -hmm. and being able to sort of sight fish the pike, like sitting's not bad, but standing on top of that, it's even better, right? You feel like right. Jesus basically just standing on the water yes. fishing for yeah, pike. On the so. water, yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So it's I'll definitely perfect. have to try so, out some of those. You know, it's nice if you can do that, because obviously then you can sit down and have the, you know, the fin mobility and stuff like that. But in the lake, a lot of times that's not as big a deal, you know, so being able to just stand up. And now does it stop the water? The yeah. Fair enough. Does it what? Does it stop the water? Is it a water barrier or just a, a mesh barrier? No, it's a water barrier. It completely okay. closes off the bottom of the raft. So oh, okay. allows you to stand up, put gear underneath the seat because that it's closed yeah. off all the way to the back. Um, it fits super tight. So that's what we hand build everyone to a boat so that when we when you blow it up, it pulls it very, very tight like yeah. a drum I and mean, you can flip it over and it's the nicest cot you'll ever sleep on <laughs> um, Sweet. Yeah, but but you it's just super tight with the water pressure it actually makes it pretty solid that, and that's perfect, you're standing yeah. down in the boat anyway i mean you're almost up to your knee close as, as you're standing on that bottom and so you're yeah. not going anywhere you're in yeah. the boat that's cool so. actually another i could see another uh, avenue for that I'm floating down the bow in the winter and it's so cold. The water's so cold. It's splashing up and like freezing on my legs. So almost having that on the bottom, I could float down and no problem. Right. right. So yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. No, that's really cool. So um, just while we're on that topic, like I really like that boat bottom. Are there any other cool attachments you've been working on launching that people really enjoy? Um, you know, they said the, the motor mount's been more popular even with that bottom because that cool. combination can make a slick little setup. And yeah. then the anchor system, of course, being able to drop anchor anywhere and, and set up on rising fish or yeah. keep yourself from getting blown in the wind so you don't have to work so hard going back and forth. Um, but uh, presently, no big new accessories I'm announcing right now, but... Um, yeah. We're always working on it. We're always, you know, like customers have ideas. We welcome, you know, because a lot of them have totally. come from, from other people. Yeah. Yeah. They're the people <laughs> hiking through the bush. Yeah. I'd be like, huh, yeah. I wonder if I could like, attach this to the boat. Right. Like, totally. right. Well, that's a good point because we do sell it. It's not our product. It's an Alps Outdoors pack frame. Oh, um, right. That's okay. pretty cool. There are people that are actually wanting to carry this thing a significant distance. Right. Um, you could fold the boat up, throw it on there with a set of oars and a pump and a seat and you're gone. You In know? the back country. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No kidding. That's awesome. So how, how has the, uh, the business been for you through, I guess, um, 2020 and the summer with, uh, changing, uh, like, I know started, you're a product based business, but, uh, yeah. you're also locally based in, um, Montana. Yeah, it's been, uh, we've, we've been good. I've seen a lot of people we work with not do as well um, and struggle just because of the travel. Of yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I do think there's a lot of the industry that's been able to do well because of all the people trying to go outside, but I don't think it's everybody right? Um, for sure. And I definitely did think retail, you know, fly shops took a much bigger hit just because they had, didn't have the foot traffic they rely on but we did all right because people wanted to get out yeah. and honestly you That's know the water master is a social distancing tool yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey how many um, how many memes do you see right everyone's saying mm -hmm. the best way to social distance is just go out exactly. fly fishing right so exactly no, that's perfect so, to hear, yeah. Rich. Um, like, uh, for myself as well, early, um, I say April, May, June, basically when everyone was going into lockdown, I had, a, uh, I say, two or three online stores that were absolutely killing it because everyone was on online, inside, yeah. looking for something inside. to do, right? So I was like, e-commerce is good good time to have. So yeah, hopefully that yeah. Uh, that really helped you guys for sure. And, and uh, For sure, yeah. yeah. I even a slow start, a little scary during the lockdown, but fair uh, enough, yeah. you know, again, once it started rolling, people started ordering some boats. So it, yeah, in Calgary, it was like golf and fishing. It's like, you couldn't get a tea yeah. time. And if you went to the river, it was like, it was yeah, every, everyone and their dog were out fishing. So, but right. you didn't have any issues with any of your shipping as well. So it might've slowed down. Um, maybe. That has definitely been different. Yeah, the yeah. shipping has been um, obviously not as reliable. Uh, we didn't really have any major issues. You know, all the people that needed them by Christmas got them for Christmas. Good. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, and we've had the inventory, luckily, um, but we have sold out of our inventory. 
Um, I'm, wow, congratulations. We are sir. now taking pre-orders for March, end of March, um, probably early April. Really? So, that's uh, awesome that, to hear. <laughs> so that's, that's a good that's problem to have, yeah. At. It is, but then the shipping and the inventory part of it, the other side, is we have to get our materials, the rolls of materials, the D-rings, all the stuff we have to get made. Yeah. It doesn't come from the U.S. We have to get the parts and pieces. Um, right. And so that part is yeah. now going to push out yeah. and take forever. So while we could be building right now, we can't because we can't get material to February sometime. So fair enough. So uh, so did you get out to? Were you able to get out fishing uh, this summer at all? I know I talked to you um, early oh, early on, but I I literally as a trout fisherman here on the Bitter River. I basically caught one really nice trout on a streamer and then some pike. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been a, it's not a fishing story year. I don't have much to tell. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Hey, yeah. but it's a business story. So it's, yeah. Well, 19 was, treated me really well. Yeah. It like, was one of my epic years. So I guess 20 was just warmed up to be. That's a fine. Slower one. They can't, <laughs> they can't, they can't all be, yeah, they can't no. all be great. Right. So no. what was the highlight of your 2019 year then? Um, I did back-to-back -back trips, one to um, Pyramid Lake, and cool. caught three I've seen monsters. That video. Yeah, and I got one that was was like 16, 17, and one over 20. So it was a uh, it was a awesome. good day. Um, yeah. Then I went to Alaska, and got my first steelhead. So cool. that was unreal. Um, yeah. Got a bunch of big trout, rainbows, and had fun with some friends. So that was really like cool. two good back-to-back, -back, like kind of big trips just so trips hey and were you yeah, able yeah. to bring any of your own gear to those trips yeah yeah because yeah. so i think did, i saw um, in the videos yeah. yeah yeah we did uh we fished the watermaster brewing on pyramid lake and the one man so um we did the one man's when we had to go out deeper um okay. and we just went out there kind of like what uh, pyramid fly co and um the fly dudes uh, you know andrew's doing guiding out there um, right. taking them out a little bit deeper off there and then um we took the Bruin on the second day because they're running really close to shore and we were able to get the Bruin out there and anchor off both ends. Cool. And hold in the, in and the just sit Bruin. in the, and what yeah. kind of, and what kind of fishing were you doing? Uh, we were going after the, the Hutton, if I'm hoping I'm saying that right, cutthroats. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah. Gigantic. Yeah. Like I said, the biggest one I caught was just over 20 pounds. You know? And streamer fishing or nymphing or? Uh, balanced leech. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so nymphing under uh, an indicator, uh, yeah. just waiting for them to come by, and and boy, when it's on, it's on. Yeah, cool. uh, lots of good fish there. I mean, the average one you catch there, you know, it's quite a bit. It's in the twenties, yeah. twenty inches, you yeah. know, long. You know, and they're trying to tell you get it off so you can get a big one. You're like, man, I <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? Take a picture yeah. of that every time in Montana, <laughs> right. twenty inch trout. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and a cutthroat, but. But anyway, so that was good. Yeah, that was fun. And the nice thing about the Bruin really like was able to figure out because um, I had done a lot of lake fishing. I do a lot of river fishing. So we right. really were able to play with the anchoring and stuff. And then the stability. I mean, I, we were able to turn it sideways with our wind against our back. And it was a yeah. fairly decent wind. And it was and, you guys. Uh, anchored. And then my friend would be on one side and I'd be on the other, standing on the same side of the boat. He's netting and I'm like pulling nice. one in. Yeah. And the boat's like sitting Fine. there and just stability. It was like, I was sitting there Unreal. like, we preach it all the time. We've tested it and moving river water. And, but even just in that situation, you know, yeah. with the lake lots and of wind. Back. Yeah. So we've, we've succeeded on the stability aspect for sure. The brewer, it's pretty unreal. Yeah. That's awesome. Cause I hear you. I need to figure that out too. I've been trying to anchor with one anchor and when it's windy, I got the rod going yep. around my head like like this, right? So yep. yeah, that's 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 sweet. We can say yeah, but you just need to get an extra cleat, um, right? Okay, to put yeah. on there to ro have a rope go the other way, and I'll hook you up on how you can kind of throw one off the front without having to buy the anchor system and all that. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah. So um, with that being said, uh, if I was to come down to Montana and do like a little fishing trip, what what are the what are the biggest places i need to come see where should i go where should i take your oh. boat should i tell you all the places i tell people trade shows no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no fair <laughs> fair enough i get and i guess no, yeah, no. each to their own it's it's whatever you no, want to water as you come here we're going to be on the bitterroot the clark fork cool. um you know we've got rock creek over here and we've got the blackfoot all right here in missoula 
Yeah. Um, a couple hours away, of course, is the Mo that everyone's heard of. You yeah. Know, Missouri, obviously, is is a place to go. I like less people, so I like to Fair. sneak into some other places, especially the Watermaster, where you can get in the places with put-ins where you have to walk. You know, you yeah. have to walk a quarter mile, not a long ways, but, you know, across the gravel bar. And, yeah. and then you can set up and you can go and you know you've got four miles to the bridge. Cool. Um, and if anyone was going to do that float, they'd have to put up seven miles ahead of you. So regardless, yeah. you're ahead of them first thing in the morning. There's nobody on that stretch. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, those are pretty cool. But that's the Bitterroot has a lot of that. The Clark Fork's fun. There's some good trout in there. Yeah, but yeah, you can travel south. Anything by Bozeman. I mean, you're talking yeah. three rivers, and um, I mean, it's Montana's. We're blessed with good fishing, and I know you start driving, you're just gonna find another river or lake. Right. Yeah. One of my buddies, uh, his family has a a cabin just uh, just outside Eureka, so they go there quite often. Oh, yeah. So I'm wait, I'm hoping that this summer the borders the the road land border will be open, Hopefully. so that uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Knock on wood, hopefully. Yes. Um, but hopefully we'd be able to get down there and maybe do some fishing. And if we do get across uh, to travel all the way down to Missoula, for sure. Come. Oh, absolutely. Come you check must. it out. Yeah. You must. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got plenty of fish here you can catch. That's perfect. Yeah. Whether you do, trust me, that's the crapshoot. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> They're here. <laughs> um, well, give me a heads up. I'd like to yeah. meet up with you. We could figure out some spots that would be really fun to take the boats out in yeah. sneak in some back awesome slew channels that you know don't get fish that house some of the bigger browns and yeah and the bit root so yeah it's uh if not i'm gonna to have to fly and just have to check that water master into as a carry-on <laughs> yeah yeah just, you can uh, yeah absolutely i travel all over all over the place yeah yeah, yeah. the beauty of this is that Kodiak will pack up all in there. It's under the 63 linear inches, under 50 pounds. Um, the backpack straps are removable, so you can take them off um, yeah. and stuff them in the bag so they don't rip them off because they have a way of mangling things, as you know. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. It's still like a loop they can grab and throw it around, but it takes that off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've gone to all the trade shows. I used to go to trade shows with a suitcase and a boat. <laughs> yeah, they, Obviously, that's all you like need. Two, we do two, three booths now with a TV. It's a different story now, but yeah. back in the day, it was me and a suitcase. Traveling and a salesman. On my yeah. back and here I am to sell a boat. Yeah, nice. My as little 10 by 10 booth. As you're pumping it up in your booth. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. It's the perfect, it's the perfect all around fly fishing mega boat for uh, this Bow River channel. And so I've been loving taking it down. I want to do a bunch more drone filming of uh, it yeah. in the summer floating down the river too. So, it's Well, I've been, been on the boat and the beauty to me is was, you know, like any river like that is being able to just stand up when it gets shallow yeah. and to stand there and to fish without having to, you know, get out of the boat. You've got a waiting aid in case you slip and fall. Um, oh, it's... But then sit down and, you know, just go down. I mean, sometimes I'll just sit on the front end of the tube and just float down 30 yards yeah stand up and hit that next little seam and you know? and that's what it is the bow is so big right and it's so long it's like mm -hmm. if you're on foot you usually have to walk a, a kilometer to the next decent run or decent hole yep. right so having that boat to just pull over fish right if nothing pull go to the next one float down it's unreal and i mean not, yeah. yeah exactly not nothing beats someone rowing you down the river i guess and put you on <laughs> fish but that doesn't always happen right so uh it's perfect so. i know but if there's anyone unless you're paying them as a guide yeah that does mean that you'll be rowing them down the road yeah as well. yeah exactly exactly <laughs> hopefully yeah. otherwise have, you're getting the bad end of the deal right? yeah it's funny i have a buddy who doesn't fish who's just loves outdoors and doing anything outdoors so when he gets a chance to row it's the he just wants to row us for eight hours down the river so it's the <laughs> perfect don't gotta pay him anything just friendship so but that doesn't happen, right? You usually have to. Not a often. Yeah. I, Jeremy rows me a fair amount. I'm going to give him credit. Yeah. <laughs> Since we're talking about people that row because yeah. he fishes more. So they feels bad that I don't get to fish as much. Nice. Yeah. Fair enough. But that's yeah. in the brewing. So we have to switch off and then we're in the water masters and singled up. Yeah. Which again is better on some of the rivers because we can split sides. You know, both banks are fishable. Yeah, you know, that's really as cool. As opposed to neg neglecting one because you're both in the same boat, you can. I'm going river left, you go river right. 
so then so, yeah what kind of like trophy trout trophy fish would i be going after when i come down to montana yeah give me some ideas well, to around learn. here it's, it's gonna be you know rainbow browns west yeah. slope cutthroat um you know the big ones like in the bitter are gonna be the brown trout you know cool. you hook into one of those big guys that are hanging out and hiding in the yeah and all the mangled mess of the trees but uh there's some big one and the clark fork has a lot of big rainbows um cut nice. bows of course that means you're going to come across those as well yeah um, there are unfortunately pike in the bitterroot and in the clark really? fork and i say unfortunately because they're not native obviously they're not really supposed to be in there is there a lot um, of them or they cause issue a lot of them really there's hmm. a lot of them and they're big so yeah i don't i notice more and more people fishing for them i don't know how many do they doing, have yeah. any kind of regulations like protecting them? Are you allowed to take them out? No, or? no, you're supposed to take them out as far as I know. Yeah, right. I don't think you're supposed to release. Right. So it's, it, yeah, interesting because I know uh, the bow in Calgary, we have like some backwater, some like um, big backwater pools, and they do find some huge pike in there, uh, yeah. but there's not a ton of them. Um, and they're just in those like backwater pools. But uh, I'd have to, relook at the regulations regarding pike but i'm almost certain it's only catch and release so you got to put those things back in if you do really? catch them yeah yeah but they're but, out there uh, right? i've seen them chase big trout up into the shallows up on the you know rocks yeah. with like to water and you're like oh my gosh yeah like an alligator going after something <laughs> hey the the spin casters need something to catch right <laughs> Right. Oh, we catch them. Well, I've got my rod set up. You kidding me? And there go you go. Crazy flies. That's what I caught on the Clark Fork last year. Is nice. The pike. Yeah. Yeah. The Use big, a big saltwater flash. <laughs> so, the, so uh, what's some of the craziest places you've seen people take your boats? Or maybe you um, have. Well, I mean, I haven't not I haven't taken them as crazy as the people that have used our boats. You know, I've taken them to Alaska, um, Mexico, and the u.s basically i guess would be about it yeah um but they've been all over I and mean, we go watermaster we started working with the problems in the beginning uh, when i started working there and when i started when i owned it if you remember you know the trout bombs correct yeah. they did the That's all right. those yeah. films um so we started with patagonia their first film um that was a funny story like some true trout bombs wander in the shop and like <laughs> we have some boats we're going to patagonia we'll make a movie and uh yeah the old, the old, <laughs> yeah i didn't own it at the time so i was making my case and, and we were able to all the employees were able to convince him to let us build boats for these guys cool um uh, and take the risk and it paid off so anyway um so that's argentina you that's know, a cool that's, story though um, you know that that's uh they took it to and they've taken those those boats everywhere and then i've got intense media now um Derek and and Court and and those guys um right putting yeah, yeah. Phil putting together the Sam let me get all their names in there <laughs> putting together all those films and they've gone um to the Arctic Circle um that's really we've cool. had them in Mongolia uh we've had them yeah so crazy places yeah I, it, we have been they've, they're in Japan being used not film but they're in Japan I've got a cool. little group of customers I have them over there and use it for steelheading believe it or not in Japan um you're not shipping to japan so, are you because <laughs> oh, how yeah. much would that cost Absolutely. sheesh that's heavy it's not bad actually really yeah, no international is is uh it's it's more than shipping to canada but uh yeah for enough. where it's going yeah. you know obviously i think the biggest stumble is necessarily shipping even to canada it's not horrible it's just the okay. taxes um, yeah. once you get you get it so that adds that extra depending on what province you know, from obviously that's different but yeah i have a love hate with shipping one of my previous businesses uh, i was a part of the product was um wine barrel furniture and decor so these mm -hmm. wine barrels were so goddamn heavy that shipping <laughs> anywhere would just ruin us it would just be yeah. so much to just uh, coming out of canada now i guess you're in the states so you guys have a much better uh distribution system and cheaper but to put a barrel on a pallet and ship it from Canada to Florida probably cost us like four or 500 bucks. So, wow. yeah, yeah. So it was yeah. really tough. So I have a love hate for shipping. That's why I always going back to it. But well, the beauty of the water master is that if, as long as you don't get maybe the boat bottom might be a second box, but the full on accessory package kit comes in one box. Yeah. Nice. You know, one size and it makes it easy. 
Yeah. Um, and honestly, we've shipped them all over the world. I mean, we just cool. shipped some to Norway. I mean, so awesome. Yeah. That's so cool that you're having that reach all over the all yeah. over. Yeah, and it's not a lot of boats out there, but they're everywhere. No, yeah, yeah. and the the more the merrier, right? The more videos and pictures you get of those out there, the better it is. Absolutely. Word of mouth. So. Yeah, and our Instagram, you can check out some of those brown trout they get in Norway in our boats. Those are impressive. Yeah, yeah, I follow yeah. you guys. I've tried to take photos of my dog when I'm out fishing with your boat, so I get the nice repost, which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> take some nice, uh, authentic content for you guys. So yeah, we like the pups in the bag. Yeah, nice. yeah, they're perfect dog boats. Yeah, Rich, basically that uh, wraps up all the questions I had. I wanted this little interview to be around half an hour cut up, so we'll put that together. But before we finish it, if you want to tell uh, the audience where they can get in touch with you, how to reach you, any of your socials, and and plug that away, by all means. Absolutely. You can uh, check out our website at bigskyinflatables.com. Um, we got a Facebook page. You can just look up Watermaster. Um, our our instagram is at watermaster one um, check it out check out of course our videos on youtube as well um, again you can just search watermaster rafts for youtube um, check it all out and yeah. if anyone's interested you know get a hold of us uh, we're we're taking orders now of course still and and we'll be back in good shape before the season really starts kicking off perfect no i appreciate yeah sharing everything about the company learned a bunch more and I love it, Rich. Can't wait to come see you down in, uh, in Montana. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. Anytime.